All right, people. So this is kind of a quick one today to just tell you about um, those systems of equations that we saw that were kind of oddballs. Those ones that had those linear systems that had either no solution or an infinite number of solutions. And so this quick talk here is just about kind of how to recognize those in their sort of matrix form. So we're given here a system of equations, three equations and three variables. And I set up the augmented matrix and I'm going to spare you the details about the work to do the row reduction. But when you do the row reduction, you ultimately get this matrix here. Or sorry, when you do your Gauss-Jordan elimination that we were talking about in the previous talk. So what you get here is this one uh, row here that looks like it's fine in this. Uh, it's got, you know, it's leading one and everything. The next row, same thing. Everything's looking all right here. But then look at this last row. You have a row of almost all zeros and then the single number one on the other side. Well, let's translate backwards and see that what, what is this row of this matrix really saying about system of equation wise. It really says 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals to 1. But that really just then says that 0 equals to 1, which we know is nonsense. So this is an example of a system of equations that we call inconsistent. So it has no solution, right? It's inconsistent because you get this, when you do your Gauss-Jordan elimination, you get this uh, one row that really tells you some nonsense, okay? Okay, so that's how one might look if you're out in the wild uh, looking at matrices that correspond to linear systems of equations. Okay, so then the next example gives us a similar looking system of three equations and three variables. And here I've set up the augmented matrix for that one. And I'd like to spare you the gory details about how you do uh, gauss jordan elimination to this one. But when you do that, you get a matrix whose reduced row echelon form looks as follows. And this meets all the criteria for reduced row echelon form. We have this row of all zeros along the bottom. And we have our leading ones in every other row. And they occur in the right order. And every time we have a leading one, we have zeros everywhere else in that column. So everything's looking good there. But notice here that, you know, we've still got some extra stuff on the uh, left side of the bar here. Uh-oh. So what's really going on? And also, this last equation, really, if we read it out again, now it really says 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals to 0. That says 0 equals 0, which we know is definitely always true. But notice that we don't have a leading one here in this uh, row. So we don't have a leading one for z. So what's going on? Oh, well, what that really means when we don't have a leading one is that z is what's called a free variable. Now, we've seen these before. This means that z can be any real number that we want. OK? And then the solutions for x and y will then depend on what value we've chosen for z. So let's just now take this uh, augmented matrix and rewrite now the corresponding system of linear equations. What we get is that 1 times x plus 25 over 17 times z equals to 95 over 17. OK, so really we can just subtract 25 over 17z from both sides and get that x equals to 95 over 17 minus 25 over 17 times z. OK, the second row becomes the equation 0x plus 1y minus 23 over 17z equals to minus 33 over 17. So if we add 23 over 17z to both sides, we get y equals to minus 33 over 17 plus 23 over 17 times z. So the solutions here will be this for x, this for y, and then z is free to be anything. So we have an infinite number of solutions here. And what we say is that this system is dependent as the x and y uh, coordinates of the solution will depend on which choice for z that we make. We are free to make any choice for z that we like. OK, let's see some more like that. 
So this Ness uh, system of equations looks like it's two equations, but three variables. Okay, so uh, what's going on here? Well, I've made the corresponding augmented matrix for this system of equations, and after doing some gauss jordan elimination, I get uh, this matrix here, which looks like it satisfies the reduced row echelon form. It's just that we're not, we, we haven't cleared everything up. We don't have all the rest zeros on the other side of, or on the left side of the bar here. So if we read out exactly what this system of equations is from this matrix, we get um, x equals to 1 ninth minus 25 over 9 times c, and y equals to minus 7 over 9 plus 22 over 9 times z. So again, Z is free to be anything that we want because again, we don't even have a leading one. We don't even have a row for that at all. So Z can be any number we want and then X and Y will be fixed to be equal to these corresponding values for that choice of Z. So again, this one is dependent on which choice you make for Z. And there is an infinite number of solutions here, right? So one for each choice of real numbers Z. Okay, and then last but not least, we get this fun looking system of equations. Uh, and when we translate in, into this augmented matrix, it looks as this one does here. Notice that the second row is twice the first row and the third row is three times the first row. So um, this is like one of those systems of equations where it's really just the same line repeated now actually three times. Um, or I guess it's repeated twice, but it appears three times, right? So if we do Gauss-Jordan elimination to this guy, we get a matrix that looks just, just like the first row with the bottom two rows now becoming zeros, all zeros. So now we don't have a leading one for either of Y or Z. So now both of those are free variables. And so with e a choice, we can pick any Y value we want and any Z value we want. Uh, and then from there, what we know is that X plus Y plus Z must equal to five. In other words, we can then solve for X and write X must equal to five minus Y minus Z, okay? So this one is like almost like doubly dependent in a sense. And there's almost, you know, so there's really an infinite number of solutions here, wow. Um, so, all right, so this is the kind of situations you might see that are kind of oddball situations uh, where we don't have just exactly one solution. We could have zero solutions or infinite number of solutions in maybe different ways, uh, but there you go. So um, next time we come back, we'll go kind of start revisiting this idea that a matrix is a generalization of a number and we'll start looking at ways that you might add or multiply those guys together like you do numbers. So we'll see you then.